In 1683, 300 years ago, the first Germans arrived in America and settled in the English colony of Pennsylvania. They arrived by ship, the Concord. Philadelphia, today among the largest cities in the United States, was the port of destination. William Penn, an English Quaker, had founded this city a year earlier. The English royal family owed him 16,000 pounds. Penn agreed to cancel the debt in exchange for a piece of land on the new continent. This land was then called Pennsylvania, in honor of him. William Penn invited freemen and adventurers from Europe to settle his new province. The first Germans to arrive were weavers from Crefil, members of the Mennonite sect. In Penn's province, all were free to practice their religion without any government interference. The first Germans settled here in Germantown, today a suburb of Philadelphia. One no ambition for stink geld and wish that was the do. One now the sport is in the belt and wish no more food. Big fresh and mood for gas is not on Greek and Ford machine. Do fresh and geld and can get the cheese drink with gasoline. I do too for stunt was is the stoke and free. Do Ford and meet the Ford machine. Not far from Philadelphia, to the north, we find the so called Pennsylvania Dutch country. The word Dutch, which usually in English means from Holland, was used in reference to the Germans, who in their dialect called themselves Deutsch. The Germans who arrived around 1700 and later were farmers. They settled in this area because they found a fertile land, similar to that which they had left in Germany. A preacher of the Brethren sect, close to the Mennonite, explains the difference between the various sects whose members settled in the new land in order to live in peace without political or religious persecution. Man kann grob unterscheiden zwischen den fancy Dutch oder wie wir sagen, den weltlichen Dutch. We are able to distinguish between the fancy Dutch, who are the worldly Germans, the Lutherans, the Reformed, and so on, and the plain Dutch, who are the simple Germans the Mennonites, the Amish, the Brethren, etc. The Plain Dutch account for only 10% of the Pennsylvania Dutch. The worldly Germans, the Fancy Dutch, do not reject the cultural patterns and ideals of the American society. The plain Dutch prefer to live apart from the real world. The worldly Germans have always been in the majority and they created the patterns of what we know today as the Pennsylvania Dutch culture. The plain Dutch refuse to use cars and electricity. In other words, refuse the modern American way of life.
Many of the fancy Dutch, those who do not reject modern American culture, live here in the eastern part of the Pennsylvania Dutch country. They haven't kept their strict religious way of life, as have the plain Dutch. People here still speak their German dialect. However, it is dying little by little. Some of them try to keep their language alive artificially by giving lessons. Now has a nail in its stomach. Deku hut and noggle in morg. Morg. Okay, deku hut and noggle in morg. Two or four of these. Deku hut and noggle in morg. Deku me kan de dera nai sog nero sog. So get the dear parku. There are even television programs in dialect, but it seems like an exhibition in a museum rather than a part of their life. Leg deine Stand zu meiner Stand, was seint der Vater es das so gun? Und da zum Moll, und da zum Moll. They farm their land using modern technology. They work with tractors and machinery, as they do in other modern countries. Und da zum Moll, und da zum Moll, und alle mal bei der Nacht. Here in the western part of the Pennsylvania Dutch country live the Amish. They belong to the smaller group of the Plain Dutch. They retain a very strict religious way of life. They don't like to be filmed because in their faith it would be considered haughty to show themselves in front of a camera. Practically all the Amish are farmers. In their fields, they still use the same equipment that their fathers and forefathers used. The Amish school teacher, Robert Mays, does not object to being filmed. He is willing to speak in front of the camera. It's rather like our concept of education, which is based almost entirely on our interpretation of the Bible. And it says there, be ye not conformed to this world. For every important question, we look to the Bible. Our dress must be plain. No gaudy colors, no buttons, no buckles. Anything which isn't plain is English. And it must be rejected. In order to keep our simplicity, the group must follow rigidly prescribed rules. And it begins with discipline. Of course, the group is always more important than the individual. The Bible says that the believer should not be grouped together with the unbeliever. So the Amish children are together amongst themselves in the one-room schoolhouses. And the parents 
who are opposed to any form of higher education, for example, the, the high schools or the consolidated schools, where they would be with a majority of non-believers and exposed to too many things of the world. Amish fathers just feel that there's too much taught in the schools that's unnecessary in a farming culture. So they insist that the children come out of school at 15 years of age. Es war ein schöner Tag im Sommer. Die Sonne war heiß. Mose war im Hof unter dem großen Baum. Dort spielte er mit dem kleinen Ziege. Die Ziege war nicht alt. Die Ziege war jung. Sie war ganz weiß. Im Eck vom Hof ist eine Pumpe. Die Pumpe ist alt, aber ist Aber sie ist noch gut. Das Wasser in die Pumpe ist sehr kalt. In dem Sommer trinken wir oft von dem Wasser. Though the Old Order Amish are strictly forbidden to use automobiles, telephones, electricity, or any other modern convenience, the majority of Pennsylvania's Amish do use diesel oil or propane gas to fuel engines that power refrigerators, motorized farm tools, and dozens of other mechanical devices. We don't have anything against all these tourists who come here in masses. They really don't interfere with us. I guess I look at it more as a money racket than anything else. They pay their money and these tour people tell them a lot of stuff about the Amish. Some of it's true, most of it isn't. And I suppose most of the tourists couldn't care either way. because they're bored in their cities. But such an exotic thing as the Amish wakes them up a little bit from their drowsiness. That's exciting. They want to get a thrill. Even if they exhibit us in wax museums, that does not mean that we do not exist anymore. On the contrary, in the last two decades, the Amish population has more than doubled nationwide to more than 80,000. It is important that we insist on our way of life as a group that we are sincere with ourselves. It is the same with our language. It is a means of defining ourselves. The fancy Dutch all have television and radios. They forget their old language, and the next generation will not know anything of it anymore. They will become English. We plain Dutch, we Amishmen, only speak Pennsylvania German amongst us. Television and radio are strictly forbidden. We are different, but we are united and determined. Ich bin am Bubbler, am Bloater, schöner 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 Bubb